is 3D printing. Now uh, Dr. Balamurgan will uh, introduce uh, our speaker, today's speaker, Mrs. Kavila Mondra. Uh, good, evening good evening to one and all, so who are watching online and offline through our uh, website as well as YouTube channel. So this is going to be the lecture series in the lockdown period uh, 06. Actually, we have our eminent engineer, uh, uh, Kavita Morgan from uh, uh, the... One moment, so i just... Uh, Kavita Morgan, she, she is an uh, entrepreneur as well as uh, she is the CEO of the company Into Design and she has done her uh, um, one moment. So she has done her education from uh, La Chalatan Residential Junior College starting from that. She has completed uh, 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 ME Advanced Architectural Design in Stockage Socials Floor Brillante. Uh, Frankfurt, and uh, she has done her uh, internship in Inform Architects, uh, and uh, as an architect as Maya Parasis, and uh, right now she is heading her own company into design, offer various levels of customized rhinoceros 3D training to design firms and individual design professionals internationally. Our vision is to develop computer modeling skills in a logical way which helps the development of computational modeling for conceptual and detailed design. So that is their uh, motto. And she is a co-founder of Into Design also. So she is a, a brand ambassador uh, for uh, women in 3D printing from uh, February 2022 uh, present, so three months plus. Uh, she is a design entrepreneur with a demonstrated history of working in the design industry, skilled in computational design, certified trainer for Rhino 3D and Grasshopper 3D printing for manufacturing, computational designer and design development professional with an MR focused in advanced architectural design from Stockholm coach for Blandy uh, Frankfurt. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. So we can proceed with the session now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the introduction. So as a journalist, have a look at 3D printing and how it is going to make a big impact towards the towards our industries and our daily life as well. So, um, so, so to the, today, uh, uh, happy May Day as well. So I'll start the presentation right now. You all can hear me if you like this. So, yeah, uh, so I'm a computational designer and also a 3D printing specialist. The whole uh, 3D printing came to me eight years back when I was doing my uh, master's in uh, architecture in uh, Germany. I was handling a lot of printers there. So that lab, we call it as a fabrication lab there. And that's the first time I encountered a 3D printing. 3D printing those days were very huge. Uh, but now it's all become much smaller and much efficient to use as well. So it's come a long way already. I'm going to be able to navigate you throughout 3D printing and uh, the varied uh, opportunities that we have inside as well. I'm uh, also a trainer with a uh, particular uh, 3D software, which is called Rhino 3D, a very efficient and curve modeling software, which is used among most industries that are uh, uh, almost uh, every industry is using Rhino 3D now. And I'm also an ambassador for a group called Women in 3D Printing. It's an international community that aims at promoting uh, 3D printing in terms of entrepreneurship, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, all the communities around the world as well. Uh, the first, uh, when we start the company, we have this vision of design needs technology. And uh, in, uh, it's a very dire need to adapt yourself towards technology. And one of which um, that we are going to talk about today is going to be 3D printing. And uh, if you look at it, our expertise lies on uh, design for advanced manufacturing, product design, product development, and training. And our uh, our uh, usage of 3D printing, 3D printing is imminent and almost every single day we work with 3D printing uh, people or 3D printers or sometimes even with the design you know, we use 3D printing and so on. So uh, that's one. To start to understand, what we need to understand is yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little bit 
can do uh, to start with we typically need to understand how industrial revolution took place to work. So we started off with industrial revolution 1.0, which is mechanization with steam and water power which started, which kind of tremendously changed in uh, scenes uh, from agriculture, farming to factory and mechanization. And when we look at industry 2.0, we started off with the invention of electricity. Again, a lot of different revolutions uh, happened from there. Different need for work at Moscow, a different uh, type of company started off. And with Industry 3.0, things just toppled back with automation in industry as the main one. If you look at automation, it started something around 1970, gave development to that software. The softwares that you started using were, were all started off in 1970s. That is, uh, there was in between human and machines that became computers. Right. So that was automation that was happening and in industry 4.0, that is what we're going to talk today. And 3D printing is probably, I will say, one of the many that are going to impact our industrial revolution as well. So this is, uh, this is from a source from Rex Publishing, which claims to be, uh, these are the main influences that are going to affect industry 4.0. And uh, we cannot talk in terms of uh, autonomous robots separately or simulation separately or electrical manufacturing separately, everything works together as one entity. Say for example, uh, if you, I, I'm going to give a small example of a car design that uh, Rolls Royce has been, uh, Rolls Royce has been trying to implement in the industry. What they're trying to do is if you look at the right side corner, there's something called Internet of Things. So when a car manufacturer gives the car out to a user, what he will do is he fits a lot of Internet of Things together. Say for example, the engine, if it has a failure, it will send a message telling this particular user from this particular city, there is some problem in this engine. This, you know, this particular communication will be delivered from the car to the company directly. So that is Internet of Things. But, uh, say, for example, the car can also be additive manufactured. So I'm going to show you some examples where something has a percentage of a car has been created as well. So if you look at it, everything from big data to autonomous robots to simulation, everything works in one hand in hand. So we put to embrace all of it together and understand each entity as its own as well and how each of them interact with each is also a very important uh, thing with Industry 4.0. And on a nutshell, if I can explain what Industry 4.0 is, it is nothing but the computerization of Industry of 3.0. Um, if you think about it, what will eventually happen is there will be a lot of upskilling that is required to get into Industry 4.0. That I will also elaborate what those are in some moment. So when it comes to 3D printing, it is actually a technical term is actually additive manufacturing. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have heard of it or about it or not. Uh, I'm going to give you a little elaboration of what additive manufacturing is about. It's as simple as clay modeling. When we start off clay modeling, there is a particular technique called clay. Uh, called coiling. Coiling is nothing but you roll it into a thin strip and then you start placing it layer by layer by layer. Right? So that is called coiling. It's a very and it's a very good technique for clay modeling. Now, 3D printing is a very similar process. It does layer by layer by layer. This is called additive manufacturing. Now, most of our traditional manufacturing is all subtractive manufacturing. You basically keep a particular material and you sculpt out of it. That is subtractive manufacturing. So. Firstly, when I'm talking about this, there is, you already understand that there is much less wastage in additive manufacturing. Let's look at what this is. So this is what I've been talking. There is layer by layer. Uh, uh, the red lines are the layers that are creating and uh, the one that you see above is the nozzle. So it is, uh, the, um, uh, it is a process of joining materials through a model data. And then you eventually get the built product. Uh, it, it takes a little bit of time these days, say, but seven years back when I started a particular model, if it takes 24 hours, today it takes around three hours, right? So that is the kind of efficiency we are getting with technology. And there'll be no time, we'll probably get a model in, say, 15 minutes or 20 minutes as well. So this is, again, a concrete printer, an image of it. You can see that uh, every single level is printed and then it gives you as one particular entity. So uh, just to run through printing, I've been, um, for, for me it has only been seven years, but it's been running ever since from 1985. Probably uh, the reason now you're seeing it's 1985, but then in 2000, probably in two plus three years, you would have seen it booming up quite a bit. You see a printer running. But 
the whole idea why it didn't kind of uh, boom in the industry was because it was patented by many companies, these taxes, and uh, again, Charles Hull also patented it. So, it was in 1995, he patented the first technology called SMA. Uh, and slowly in 1997, he started the uh, 3D system started getting the more new types of technologies. He was just one of the leaders in this technology. Yeah, there is also uh, there are, so one of the first uh, Asia. Yeah, one of the first uh, 3D printing uh, companies that was set up in Asia was also in Chennai. He was set up probably 15 years back. Right, so that is also there. And in 1989, the technology that you would have mostly seen, that is called the desktop printer, was patented in 1989. That is called an FD technology. And 1990 was when CAD 2 came up. And when it comes to slowly, what happens was you will notice that uh, the health industry is one of the few that accesses technology in a much or embraces technology in much higher. So you will see medical organs starting uh, starting. So, you know, they are starting to research quite a bit of prosthetics media. So, this is back in 2000, almost 20 years back. And uh, in 2008, prosthetics started developing. Silver, silver, silver. This particular Urbi is one of the first prototype car in 2010. So, it took five years for them to finish the sample percentage of an end user car. So, I'm sure that the measures will be a few minutes. So what happens is in 2014, there is a big boom in the industry that was done in the case of it's finally of a particular thing that is particularly of FDM technology and that is your desktop printer that you have seen in your universities or around in most labs. So uh, coming back, NASA. NASA does most interesting work. In terms of not just NASA, even in our ISRO, there are quite a bit of computers that are available. What they've been trying to do is in space, it is much better if you take a printer, start printing food, start printing houses. So they've been embracing this technology quite a bit. And in future, there's uh, something uh, that I would like to share. You know, what most people think is uh, just like Xerox machine. There was a, you would notice that some of uh, 10 from years back, the Xerox machine is very, very really famous. You used to go pay some money and then start taking uh, copies. Similarly, uh, what happens now is those Xerox machines are there in your house. There will be a similar uh, transition. 3D printers now will be available in labs, probably in future it will be available in your house. I actually have one in my house right now itself. So 3D printers are quite accessible, quite user friendly to use as well. And you have the power of manufacturing in your hand. That is that will be uh, very close to you in the future as well. So it will uh, 3D printing will revolutionize the way you think the way you realize the way you produce. Say for example, you want to buy a pen. You might even download a particular model, 3D print at your home. So these are possibilities in future that will definitely take place. And uh, coming to industries, I'm noticing that there are a lot of different types of engineers. That are here. So, I'm just going to uh, probably show you some of the industries. Automotive industry is something most of my clients are from automotive industry. We've been working with them for design for manufacturing for 3D printing. So, uh, we work with Hyundai, Ether. Everybody are actually embracing quite a bit of uh, 3D printing into their uh, research team as well and also for end user. This particular card that you see here, it is called LM 3D Swim. Which is which has 75 percent 3D printed parts in the body, particularly the chases. And it's uh, if you look at the material, it's 20 percent carbon fiber and 80 percent ABS plastic. It is one of my favorite projects as well. And uh, another thing is uh, Ford Motor Company has also patented uh, one particular idea of 3D printing brake disc. So this brake disc is not a prototype; it's an end-user product. So that means they were going to start doing mass. So the next one is medical industry. Medical industry and the medical industry is probably the biggest industry in India. And uh, to be frank, in the whole of the world, medical industry is uh, doing quite a bit of cutting it, cutting it uh, research here in India as well. So you would notice that uh, true, to, true to life organ replicas are majorly done in the University of Minnesota. Prototyping new surgical tools are also done. There are also uh, a lot of, uh, you would see a lot of dental community that are working with 3D printing. Um, that I'm, I'm also a part of, where they very, very uh, happy in the embrace technologies. They try and 3D print uh, orthodontic uh, things, and they also feel that these are much, much low cost for them. 
So that's one industry which uh, we're making a big impact on. And jewelry industry, of course, uh, one of our clients at Danish, uh, what happened was uh, when we went to the Hozo plant, we, uh, generally what notion you will have is the goldsmith will be the first in the supply, right, in the chain of the industry. But the goldsmith is sitting in the last and 3 d printer was the first. That means there was a person, a CAD modeler and a designer created a 3D model. The first piece was actually 3D printed, which is called a masterpiece. And only then the production happened. So you will already notice that the 3D printer has found the first position to come in in the production. And then the goldsmith is the, was in the last. It's a little uh, uh, delicate situation because a lot of goldsmiths are losing job in this uh, uh, impact. But what they need to do is, uh, I, I also know a lot of goldsmiths who have been upskilling themselves. They learn Rhino, they learn different 3D modeling softwares to encounter themselves to start understanding 3D printing as well. So that's another case. You lose jobs, you gain jobs. Another industry, the aerospace industry, this is one of my other favorite examples to give. Uh, what happened was uh, FAA gave an approval for titanium parts printing for Dreamline now. And what that did was the one you see on the left, the bracket was 3D printed. But then uh, what that did, that did was it did uh, a cost reduction of dollar three million for air airplanes. That is quite a bit for the air uh, airplane industry. So this also revolutionized the entire design of the Dreamliner as well. This is one. Another one is oil and natural gas. Oil and natural gas is very interesting. Now this is what we call as a decentralized manufacturing. What happens is there might be small drill parts that are necessary, and it's every time for them to go out and then you know get the drill part. It's very uh, little uh, uh, hectic for them to move out because it's a very decentralized zone. So what they do is they start 3D printing their part in the particular area. So the image that you see is somewhere in the sea. So you can decentralize your manufacturing procedure, print it, 3D print it, and then you can start using it. G, G has been doing quite a bit of research on these lines, particularly for the oil and natural, natural gas things. Another one is fashion industry. Fashion industry is uh, also embraced it really well. You would find uh, RAM shows just connected with 3D printed uh, objects. Another one example is this is a movie shot from Black Panther Marvel series where most of them are also encouraging the 3D printed parts. The, the cap that you see on the lady on the right side is also completely 3D printed along with the one that she's wearing on the neck. This is also an Oscar winning um, Oscar winning uh, design, fashion design that they bought in as well. Uh, furniture industry. What happens with furniture? I, uh, I usually inter interact with the furniture industry as well. Now, these are not at all prototypes. You can sit on them. You can use them in your daily use. Their uh, lifetime is actually pretty good. You can get delicate, complex designs as well. Uh, so, furniture industry is also embraced it really well. Another one, uh, this uh, was in the news two, three years back. Uh, this is a steel bridge, a steel 3D printed bridge that was done in Amsterdam. Uh, it's very, uh, uh, one thing is Amsterdam, Netherlands, uh, the entire country embraces 3D printing for one very important reason. They have a lot of small bridges on their canals and they hate to pollute the canal. So what they're trying to do is, uh, or why they're using 3D printing, is because uh, when you start printing, I'll show you the first image actually. This is actually another bridge from Netherlands. So when you start printing, what happens is the robo sits right on the bridge and not under. So whenever you construct a bridge, what you need to do is you spoil the entire canal and pollute the canal. So you can avoid that by 3D printing one by one to, uh, to, to an automated room. Right? So that's another example. Festival industry, back with a presentation. Yeah, so that's the 3D printed uh, Bridge. Now, this one, I don't know how many of you have seen this, but this is still there in IIT Madras campus. It was done by a few alumni. Uh, the, the group is called Tabasta. So, this is a 3D printed toilet uh, that's uh, right there in the center of civil engineering department. You can also see the small texture that is there. It's nothing but concrete that is uh, that is uh, built layer by layer by layer. It's a beautiful machine. If you walk in, they have the 3D printer also in the uh, 
near to the Royal Civil Industry Department. You can also have a look at it. This is also the first 3D printed toilet all over the world, a fully functional uh, toilet. And this is another uh, uh, office building in Dubai. Uh, what I would like to show you is the elegance that you can get in construction and uh, with complexity in design, the customization, the value of the construction cost doesn't increase. It's the same. So this is a classic example for uh, complexity in design as well. Again, I would like to say that it will definitely change the way you think, you realize, and you produce. Now, if you look at the impact on manufacturing, If you look at the impact on manufacturing, so there are two things. Now, I'm not going to say traditional manufacturing is bad, additive manufacturing is good. What we need to understand is where this is good and where this is good and utilize the maximum potential of it. Now, if you look at the overall ecosystem, so if you look at the overall ecosystem, uh, to understand traditional manufacturing, you need raw materials. The raw materials comes into a factory. You need a big factory to have multiple machinery for manufacturing, more for assembly, and so on. You need a lot of labor for assembly, and distribution comes into the basement as well. But an additive manufacturing, when you start embracing additive manufacturing into the system, what I would like to show you is the right hand side one. This person. So this person can sit anywhere in the world, design a particular product, or it could also be a CAD modeler who's developing a particular product. So he's in Spain, and so 3D printing happens in India, or it can happen in Sri Lanka. So wherever, so this is called uh, localization or decentralization at the end. Right? So that is also a possibility. So what happens here is there is a lot of uh, overheads that cut, cuts down in terms of. Uh, Factory space and so on. A lot of environmental carbon footprint is reduced, and assembly as well. There's a good point about assembly, which I'll speak later. But this is generally the ecosystem that we can think of. So these are all the different pros of using additive manufacturing. The first one is mass production. I know you will be surprised to see, think that I'm talking about mass production and 3D printing, but this is a possibility. I'll give you two examples. One is something that's happening in uh, New York. Another live example is what is happening during COVID situation. We've been able to mass produce quite a bit of face shields, quite a bit of masks in the last 20 days. So I, uh, I'll also now get you through that. Another one is mass customization, complex manufacturing, decentralized manufacturing. I'll speak about each of this and how it implies on period printing as well. So this is the example of mass production. So there's a company called Voodoo Manufacturing Company, which is right in the city of New York. This is a space where they have almost 200 uh, printers. They've actually multiplied it quite a bit. They have more than 200, 300 printers. And uh, what happens is the same product can be printed in all these machines, and uh, they can print up to one to 10,000 units in a day. So depending on the size of the geometry as well. So there's a uh, we, we, can, we cannot deny that mass production is not possible, but also say for example, sometimes injection molding can be really fast. It really depends on the particular object that we are talking about here. So there is a possibility of uh, mass production. But when it comes to 3D printing, mass customization is the key. Uh, there's a very interesting company. They started at around uh, six years, years back. This is called uh, Normal Tech. Uh, this is a very simple solution. If most of you, uh, if you look at your headsets, most of you will get a little bit annoyed and notice this doesn't get Apple is better, another company is better. But what normal does is it allows you on the right side you will see a picture of a girl. So this is the app they developed. In the app, what they will do uh, is they will ask you to take five or ten pictures starting from this part, one, two, three, and so on. So once you take, it scans your ear. And it kind of gives you a solution that your your shape is like this, and it will give you a perfect fit. This actually worked, and it's very very uh, efficient uh, and 
some very productive heads that most people have found and they have really good reviews also. It comes to around uh, 40 to 50 dollars, which, which is also viable. So uh, this is mass customization. There are a lot of mass customization opportunities happening right now. Say for example, uh, 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 there, there are a few jewelry companies which are also looking at mass customization. Now, uh, say they will give a standard ring size, but then, say for example, you want another kind of diamond, then they will change. They will customize each print orders. So, customization is the key right now. So, 3D printing it has a capacity to, capacity to handle mass customization. Complex manufacturing. This is one example of complex manufacturing where uh, this is a lead uh, jewelry designer who creates complex patterns, but to create it also with a craftsman is getting really uh, exhausting. So, 3D, this is a proper 3D printed, uh, it's not a casting, it's a proper 3D printed uh, jewelry that is printed using an SLA technology. So, this is one printer, and apart from it, for complex manufacturing, I can always say drill bits and other things are also very complex, particularly for the oil industry. So again, there, there is a need for complex manufacturing. Again, when it comes to rapid prototyping, I think this is the most used right now. If you want to see a product, you can immediately prototype and develop. But say, for example, four five years back, if you want to prototype, you have to wait for one, at least one week, minimum of one week to see your object. So what happens is in this way, R and D, your research and development slows down. So quick prototyping is a very uh, added advantage in 3D printing. This is one of the things that I really uh, like about 3D printing, which is called on-demand manufacturing. Now we have a sister company called High on Life, where we design certain, uh, we have a lot of designers working with us and we will design a particular product and we design for 3D printing. So when we put it online, say for example, someone can buy this planter, what uh, the buyer will do is they will put a booking online saying, yeah, I need five pieces of this. So upon the booking, upon confirmation, we'll start maybe printing the product. Now, this is a classic example for on-demand manufacturing. So supply versus demand is also met as for the, this one. So there will, there will be very less wastage and so on. Now, uh, this, the next one is unified manufacturing and assembly stages. Now, this is some, this is a great interest for most uh, car companies. Renault has been doing quite a bit of uh, effort in, you know, if they, they had a lot of broken engine parts, no, not broken, sorry, assembled engine parts, which they combined together. I can't show the image here, but it's a very classic example of how they want to unitize all the parts, like this, for example. Now you'll notice that this, the first one is the before picture and the second one is the after picture. Now the after can be printed mostly with 3D printing because it is one unique member and it has a lot of intricacy in terms of uh, traditional manufacturing. So now what happens is every process here, the manufacturing process is simplified and the assembly is also simplified here into one part where say there are 50 parts which is it is optimized into one part and the optimization can be 3D printed. The next one is decentralized manufacturing. Uh, I think most of you would have seen uh, our police officials who are standing uh, on the streets guarding us. You would have seen them wearing a face shield. So what happened, uh, this is a very interesting story and it's a very live example, close to my heart as well, because 20 days back, what happened was, uh, since I'm a part of the Muslim Trade Printing community, I keep watching what's happening in Spain and other places. So one of my friends in Spain, 3D printed this face shield and gave it to the nearby hospitals. Looking at her, well, what I did was I also started printing, but I noticed that I had only one printer in my house. So I contacted the rest of the almost in Tamil Nadu, or we left out a mail telling you know, whoever is interested, please participate over with us. And in the end of two days, we had 200 participants to uh, sorry, 100 WhatsApp. We had access to 200 3D printers. So we started 3D printing a lot of face shields. And we started uh, gifting to our local areas. Say, I, I live in Nadia, so I gave it closer to my uh, closer to the hospitals in Nadia. And this particular uh, shields that you see uh, police wearing are actually developed uh, by IIT Madras. Uh, they have a lot of 3D printers inside as well. So they've been also giving it to police uh, people. Now, this is a live example of how we are fighting against patients without even any factory opening. The first two, three days it was super confused, and we had no factory opening that time. So this is a classic example. On the right side, uh, the market. So this is the band 
that most of the three people did. It took almost uh, 20 minutes to half an hour for us to three in that time. And the whole speech needs were fixed in on, on top of it. We just used a punching hole to fix it. And there we had a solution for at least safeguarding a little bit for our warriors. So this is also called decentralized manufacturing. Now, Ramba, I also quoted decentralized manufacturing for the oil and gas industry where we work in a remote environment. So that is also a classic example of decentralized manufacturing. Now, everything, if you look at it, it's all local versus global. Now, this is a word that uh, we commonly use when it comes to 3D printing, local. That's anyone sitting from anywhere can also access it. And you have to start thinking globally and, we can, and hence we can act locally. So that's, so that's one thing. Okay. I'm getting a lot of messages, but probably I'll read it at the end of the um, conversation. I have a little bit more to go. So when it comes to, uh, I think what's very, very important is I, the reason why I showed, why I showed all these industries was because in every single industry, we will need a 3D printer. Uh, for us, when we sit in our uh, office in Adair, we meet on Monday if we meet a robotic engineer, on Tuesday we meet a mechanical engineer, on Wednesday we meet an automobile engineer. So when because we're doing design for 3D printing or design for advanced manufacturing, we tend to meet a lot of people and we cannot say that we work only with this piece. Like, hence, it was very, very important for every one of us to kind of uh, embrace this technology or adapt into this technology. It's nothing very uh, difficult. It's a very simple process which I'm going to tell you. All you need to understand is there are few steps. You need an idea. That idea needs to be converted into a 3D model. A model, this, this part is very, very important. Anybody can do a 3D model, but it requires a little bit more uh, uh, expertise to create for 3D printing. It has to be a perfect 3D model. And then the next step is say, for example, if you're printing for cars, you might need to use ABS technology or a composite technology, or you need composite 3D printing, or you need carbon 3D printing, or you would need each of it will require each technology. For, for, for uh, jewelry, we will need recent technology. Right? So for prototyping, you need a normal FDM desktop printer. So you need to identify what is the right technology for your business. And the next one is you need a 3D printing software for the particular technology and for the 3D printer. This is something we call as a slicer. So once that is done, the slicer will tell you, okay, your model is really good. You can start 3D printing. And once the 3D printing is done, depending on the product, depending on the technology that we use, we can do a push production. Now, this is the cycle of 3D printing or how you use 3D printing in your technology as well. We just need to do a lot of reading on what is the best technology for your business as well. And there are quite a lot of uh, different kinds of products, uh, machines that are available. So there is a SLE, there is a, a, a DLP, there are double dual extrusion printers, there are multicolor printers like HP. But uh, every day is a new innovation in the printing industry. Right. If you miss one day, you'll be like, oh, wow, they printed a car yesterday. Then in the next day, they will say, oh, they printed a space rover. So you just have to keep yourself uh, updating yourself as well in this industry when you're here. I think there's a uh, good industry revolution 4.0 coming up. Uh, I speak about industry revolution 4.0. It was actually a term that was coined first time in uh, Germany by uh, Angela Merkel, the uh, ex um, Mr. that was there. But who reframed these things together was World Economic Forum. So that is also a good forum for us to follow and to understand, particularly for uh, business leaders who are there. Uh, they, they will already know that industry 4.0 has come up. And different new technologies, a lot of different processes, and completely different business models. This, this is a very, very important um, thing for us because. Uh, what you see now in five years, that particular job opening will be completely different. So, what I would like to end with is this is one of my favorite uh, lines. It is not the strongest of the species that survives, not the most intelligent ones, but the ones that can adapt to change. That is probably what is very much required right now for our uh, industry revolution 2.0 as well. And upskill and adapt to change is the key for our uh, healthy living as well. Uh, thank you.
I was plus eight. Anybody have any questions? Dr. Bala? Uh, uh, yes, sir. sir. I'm, um, I'm just there, sir. Uh, sir pe uh, people can unlock themselves and the rise up for their own. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. It's audible, audible sir. sir. You can go ahead and ask. Yeah. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Very nice uh, presentation, and it's very uh, uh, informative. Uh, how would uh, this will be applicable for uh, the uh, uh, sheet steel uh, in a, you know, uh, manufacturing uh, industry, uh, which is uh, in, uh, involves a lot of uh, metals? Manufacturing of uh, components. Okay, so if we are talking, there, there are actually quite a bit of micro 3D printers. Hello, if you can hear me. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, ma'am. You, you can talk. You can talk. You can talk. Yes, sir. So uh, there are quite a bit of metal 3D printers that are also available these days. But the only thing is, uh, right now the cost factor is really huge. So it's not very commercially started. Uh, people are not commercially started using it. But I myself have noticed that uh, HAL, Industrial Aeronautics Limited, has already 10 machines of those that they're using. Probably right now the cost is a big thing. But if you have any complex patterning, then definitely uh, this will come into come in handy. But if it's just a cutting, say sheet metals are just thin and you, of the exactly. particular laser cutting will be more than enough for that. So probably for that, you will not require 3D printing as much. but when it comes to complex designs, you will definitely require one. Okay. Now, you are talking about the mass uh, production, mass custom, as well as customization. So, in that contrast, only I must. In terms of mass customization, sir? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, custom, no, custom, no, custom, uh, customization based on individual customers' requirements. No, the pattern get, uh, gets changed. The design pattern gets changed. So in that uh, we we are, we are anyhow using the direct punching machine, punching machine, all these uh, these things are there. So if we need to have a prototype uh, for uh, uh, developing that uh, model, so whether it, is it possible to have? Uh, you know, you were uh, talking about the, uh, the whatever the uh, before manufacturing, uh, we can see it within one hour of what is the design verification. So in, in that context, is it uh, applicable to man, uh, man, metal industry also? Yes, uh, very much, very much. We've been working with quite a few people uh, on those lines as well, sir. Uh, the whole idea is uh, when it comes to a single piece of prototype, it's uh, much easier and much efficient on uh, 3D printing it. Sometimes they also either try to scale the product and uh, print it and see, or they also go in for life. Uh, if you look at a quick prototype machine, right now in Chennai, the biggest is one meter by one meter prototyping machine that we have in number two. What would be the approximate cost? I said, well, it depends on the design complexity. So, uh, oh, once again, I can show you what cost. I'll show you a part. I can tell you how much time that took. This is that. 3D printing. So if you look at it, this is the size I'm showing it on my face so you understand. So this takes about uh, four hours to 3D print. So uh, most people work from uh, one, one to two hours to two hours to two hours to three per hour to 3D print it. You can hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, four hours to 3D print. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. Madam, Madam, yes, good evening. This is Raj Kumar. Hello, sir. Uh, Ma'am, uh, just now I have entered. Uh, I have not seen your uh, uh, PPTs. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. But uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, what is the difference between rapid prototyping and 3D printing? Okay. Both are the same, sir, actually. Rapid prototyping was a particular term that they uh, called 
uh, when I told you, uh, okay, uh, before in the presentation, I just said uh, seven years back, certain machines were called rapid prototyping, but all of them have the same meaning. Rapid prototyping, 3D printing, additive manufacturing are all very similar words. Okay, um, what type of uh, uh, the ranges? Uh, the ranges or uh, uh, the metals? What metals uh, you are fabricating in your uh, your uh, company? Uh, specifically, any material or that material only you are uh, making a three D printer? Okay, so we we print T L A implements. TLA is polylactic acid, which is mostly used for prototyping. ABS is for, uh, you can also start using it for end user car parts. And uh, we have nylon. Nylon is also a very strong material. TP is another material that is for thermoplastics, uh, which are soft materials that you find on behind the mobile covers, right? So those are called TP. We can 3D print that. We also have uh, steel printing. We can get access of titanium printing. And uh, yeah, steel and titanium can also be 3D printed. We also have some materials, different ones. This is actually a byproduct of uh, copper. We have copper, there is cork material, there are, uh, th there are really strong carbon fibers that are available. And we also have uh, connect with uh, another company that does um, composite 3D printing, that is FRP 3D printing as well. So most of the materials can be 3D printed as of now, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have you switched off your sharing uh, the screen? Ah, yes. Uh, I'm not Hello? Yeah, it is audible. Ah, yes, sir. I can hear you. So myself, you know, I'm a student dancer. So I have that uh, we had stand uh, and they go. Oh, so you're not very clear, sir. The question was not clear. So my question is about the composite fragility. So more and so, so could you type your question now? Because uh, it's not really audible. Okay, okay, I'll I'll uh, okay. Yeah, that should be great. Other questions, anybody? Uh ma'am, good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, I'm Dr. Uday Kumar, a professor and head of the mechanics department, KLM College of Engineering program. Hello, sir. Uh, I need only question. Uh, is there is any specific software for using that uh, additive manufacturing? Okay, sir. So th there are two, in the process of 3D printing, there are two times you'll encounter a 3D modeling software. Okay. The first time will be for developing your idea, which can be done using with AutoCAD. Uh, solid work, all the software that you use for it. Now. Once you develop the product, when it becomes a 3D printable format, which is mostly STL, then you need the second software. Now, the second software is the software that will be compatible with the 3D printer. Now, uh, that really depends on the 3D printer that you will be having, but an open source 3D printing software is called CUDA. This is the most famous one and it's a very user friendly one C U R A. So that's, that's pretty good, sir. So these are the two softwares you will require for 3D printing. More than enough for us. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, hi, ma'am. This is Sue. There is Run. Uh, just uh, any material can be done with whether aluminium or anything can be processed through this one of through digital printing or something. Another thing is what is the tolerance we can achieve? For example, in mechanical model, what is the plus or minus tolerance when we can achieve something? Okay. Okay, sir. So first, with respect to aluminium, uh, we can 3D print aluminium. So I need to check up on that, but uh, yeah, I can check up and uh, let you know because EO is as a aluminium 3D printing machine as well. Mm -hmm. So that is one. Uh, can you repeat the second question, sir? What is the tolerance you can achieve? 
that is my my grand plus one is ten my grand is twenty my grand is five twenty my mom like that something. Yes, sir. so we have put a local FDM. Sorry, when I say local, I mean the desktop, uh, which is easily accessible. Uh, it really depends on the three D printer, sir. So say for example, we use a machine called Ultimaker, which is a high precision prototyping machine. That gives us around 0.0 to 0.404 mm of tolerance. But there are other machines in the industry which will reduce the precision level. Uh, if I can tell you a simple technique, both the money, both the precision. That is, uh, if you buy a 3000 uh, machine, which is a flash forge, you will get a tolerance of, uh, even uh, you have an uh, issue of even 1 mm, sorry, 0.8 mm. To okay. one mm as well because when it melts, it may not print really well. But uh, the machine, uh, say we have, which is called an Ultimaker, this is a very high precision one, which gives you up to 0.0 to 0.04. That will cost you around three lakhs. And you also have a 12 lakh machine, which will give you an accurate, almost accurate, but tolerance comes in in all the machines as well. Uh, where do you put up to your machine? Where is your factory? Is so, so we are we are put up in Adair as well. Okay, uh, the only thing up to ADS material can be the side joint of the very late only. I'm sorry, the water of the materials you can produce with your machines. We can, we can produce the uh, uh, ABDs, DLA, DPU, nylon. So we can go in for steel, aluminum can also be a possibility. Okay. Steel and metal printing can also be done. Well, it's like digital printing, also same thing. That's why we are printing digital printing with our printing. It's also same. DLP, yes, sir. yes, sir. This DLP is a much higher technology, much faster, and you will get much good colors as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I have a question, ma'am. Uh, I'm uh, calling from Pune. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question that uh, for high temperature materials like peak and alten. Which particular 3D printer do you recommend, ma'am? So, how much, uh, what is the melting uh, temperature? It's around 400 to 450 degrees uh, tem temperature. Okay, okay. So, for that, uh, on a general note, most technologies, the most commonly available technology is MPM, which can print only up to 50 degrees Celsius yes. or uh, around 300. But for your uh, but for 400 degrees Celsius, you might want to check with SLA technique. SLA technology is uh, the sintering technology, basically. Okay. There are, there are certain machines. Since you're in Pune, uh, yeah. there is a company uh, in uh, Mumbai, which can probably also help you. They hold a lot of SLA. Probably we can also uh, share the contact via email as well. Okay. okay. Yes. And one more question I have is that uh, for... Uh, Production engineering tooling, have you uh, got any examples where uh, some tooling printing has been done using 3D uh, printing techniques? Uh, that's, that's a little, uh, that's not my expertise, uh, the tooling part, but if you want, I can probably check with my other colleagues and get back to you on that. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Okay, there, there is a question that was asked by uh, Chenna Basama some time back. So, this question was, my question is about the 3D printer confidence trend when it, come, when it is compared to the traditionally manufactured part. How efficient these 3D printed parts towards the remote UV apply? Okay, so uh, when you start printing a functional part, uh, you, you might have to always optimize and check with, say SolidWorks has the ability to check load calculations, right? You might have to check the load calculation, you might have to see what your end user in terms of, end user part in terms of grams should be. And most of the slicing software, the third software, the software that I was telling you, it will tell you how many grams that part is. So, you might have to recalculate back and forth. It's a trial and error method. Did I answer that question? Hmm? Do you have any questions? Kumar. Hello? Are you good? Yeah, yes, I can, I can hear you very well. I am Kumar. Hello. In the beginning, you told you have one machine in your house, right? Yes, sir. 
what is the maximum weight you can make a component in? Uh, so it, we don't speak in terms of weight, but uh, in terms of weight. volume, in terms of volume, we can put in okay, volume. Weight. Volume is one factor, one factor. Yes. Maximum factor depending upon the thickness, whatever may be, the weight of the component will be increased, right? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. There may be uh, there may be some handling <coughs> of this. Uh, that handling in the sense, it will be die and all that, right? Something like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Something is required. Okay. For that, that's why I asked you how much it, uh, weight it can be possible. Another question, suppose if I gave you a component, you see that. How much time you will take to make a component? Uh, which component, sir? Any component. Suppose I give one component to you. Okay. okay. To make in the 3D component, right? 3D print. Yes, sir. Suppose you see, I have given one thumb there. Mm -hmm. You want to make it in your uh, grid. Okay, sir. How much time you need it? Whether you are taking care of copy technology. Suppose sometimes you have a facility. If I put a thumb there, it will totally copy and take the coding or whatever it may be. It will take it somewhere. Okay, okay. Otherwise, you take the measurement of this component, then you have to make it. 3D modeling and then it will be converted to 3D printing, right? Yes, sir. So, so, from your point of view, from your equipment, whatever your technology, suppose if I give any component, a small component, that okay. the diameter will be around uh, 60 mm maximum dia and height will be around 10 mm, okay. 10 centimeter. 10 okay. centimeter by 50, 50 or 60 centimeter, the maximum dia part will be up. 30 centimeter, right? This is a shape, phone chip. Okay. So it's like that, some component, you just enter component, tell me, or end pen, whatever will you use it, to tell me how much time you need it for this Yes, sir. So, uh, let's, do. okay, I'm going to show you a thumbnail. So, this is as simple as how it goes, right? So yes, that's why I'm asking this thumbnail. Yes, sir. This is a very simple geometry mm -hmm. where it is a cylinder. Uh, yes, okay. Open, uh, open on one yes. side, which has a one mm thickness. No, no. Uh, what I want is how much time for yes, making sir. a design and uh, that's all. Yes, sir. It will take the design for a simple tumbler. That is, I, I wouldn't call it a design, but uh, reverse engineering of a tumbler will mm. take from the two hours to 3D modeling, one to two hours, depending on the person who's 3D modeling. For me, I will take, take around 20 minutes to do it. Once the uh, model is done, we will then take it to the 3D printer and the 3D printer to print a tumbler will take around the three hours. Okay. Yes. With respect to this, you are making a different material. You can make the tumbler in different material. Right? Yes, sir. What is this material steel? You, may, you are telling that you can make it in the ABS or whatever it may be, right? Yes. Sir. The material should be in the melted form, right? Uh, not necessarily, sir. There are different technologies. So, if we are doing steel, metal, steel 3D printing, then it will be in a powder format. Okay, then so you are taking the powder format, then it will be compressed or something like that, right? Some powder <laughs> metal, in the powder metal technology, you can convert it. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, the method that I am talking about is centering technology. Centering, okay. Okay, I want to just answer the earlier question I am asking the metal strength, right? Sir, Kumar, yes, sir. sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, sir, we can we have, have private session, 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 sir. sir. So, can you so, give a chance okay, to other sir, people okay. also? Okay. Then, with respect to the strength, madam, whatever may be the uh, technology, whether it is a foundry or casting or whatever, normally the strength may not be much different. Only there may be slight variation in strength. So, depending upon the material, not very different. Yes, sir. The properties yes. of the material will be taken care The process will be affected only slightly. Like, different only. The factor of the process. Thank you, madam. Thank you, thank you, sir. Hello. 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 Yes, sir. Uh, sir, ma'am, I am Obed from Chennai. Uh, we have a printer. Uh, uh, we are using uh, slicing software. We don't have the uh, profile for that particular printer model. Standard procedure to find out the uh, profile for that particular printing model. Sir, by profile, what part of the printer are we talking, sir? Is it the nozzle or? Uh, actually, I have a uh, Ender 3, Ender 3 uh, printer, uh, 3D printer. Uh, so, I don't find the exact uh, profile there in uh, Acura. Uh, so, uh, it's not printing properly. Uh, 
So suppose uh, is there any procedure to adjust the parameters uh, so that the uh, my suggestion will be to uh, for you to try. Uh, did you try Cura, sir? Cura Slicer software. I tried Cura, ma'am. Okay, so probably what we can do is, sir, my mail ID is there. I will put it out to you. You okay. can send me that and I can check uh, whether there are profiles that are there. Okay. Uh, we have a colleague who that uses a vendor, so I can probably guide you. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bala. Can you control that uh, session? Yes, sir, so if uh, I have no questions are there from uh, the people, so we can close the session, sir. So some of the questions are in chat session, so that probably can be mailed or uh, answered by Madam through uh, the other media, social media. Thank you so Thank you much so for much the wonderful, wonderful session. session. It gave an uh, uh, exact uh, view of what is 3D printing and how the COVID situation can be benefited out of 3D printing in manufacturing. And we have uh, uh, that to uh, uh, Chennai from uh, India to manufacture this uh, COVID uh, um, uh, kits. So thank, thank you so you much, so ma'am. So it was a wonderful session. So the polling also has thrown light on certain areas that need to be improved in our IADNAC. So the uh, lecture series hundred percentage fully satisfied. The, that is the first question that has been answered. And the audio and clarity. So that need to have some improvement. And uh, everything was perfect. Thank you, Thank so, you much so much for your session, ma'am. Thank, Thank you so you much. Uh, can you share your email ID and the phone number so that the people can contact you, ma'am, on screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For giving the opportunity to such a wide term set of people as well. So, but if there's anything in the future that you want to know, so I can also share my uh, mail ID. Mobile number is also there in the chat. If there's anything, I'll be uh, glad to answer your questions as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody. People can actually subscribe to the YouTube channel so that they can watch the channel. Thank you so much, sir.